LCM Kindergarten Families. This is Mrs. Bernie, and I wanted to share with you today um, another fun game. Actually, it's a couple of games using one resource, um, and that resource is called Tiny Polka Dot, and it's a game that I purchased from Amazon. Now, this is not something you have to purchase because in the links that I'm going to be sharing with you, you will have a free, um, smaller version of this resource, this tiny polka dot game from the creators. Um, it's Dan Finkel and Catherine Cook. They're a husband wife mathematician team who have created the website Math for Love. Um, they recognize that math is more than just getting the right answer. It's about struggling, about thinking, and about playing, as you'll see with this game. So the game that I did with you before, Number Races, was from this same couple. Um, this, this game, though, is, has a variety of cards that can be used with the resource. Um, what you'll receive today is a PDF copy um, that will include some of the games that um, I'm going to be doing a couple of these today, the Dot Tens, which is like a memory game and uh, the polka loop puzzle which is really fun and it's quite a challenge um, you'll be getting cards that will look like the ones that i have that are turned down below here and um, i'm going to be using this deck of cards today in another game um, so you'll notice that this however doesn't have the colored background so if you are interested in doing this printing this off yourself you can get the colored paper that matches they tell you in the directions what color cards you'll be using. So the decks that I'll be using today are the numeral decks and there is a dot deck with just red dots and there's a 10 frame deck. The game that you purchase also includes, this is the number circle as opposed to a number line. You'll receive dots, um, but this time with large medium and small circles for subitizing, and another deck that includes um, two toned or two different colored dots. This is great for subitizing, for putting together and helping students transition to adding. So the first game that we're gonna play today is the Dot 10 Memory. Now the great thing about this game is it can be um, a one person game or it could be up to six people. You'll deal all of the cards down and we're using the teal cards which are the num um, 10 frame cards and the, whoops, excuse me, strike that, um, the teal cards which are the um, dot cards and the blue cards which are the 10 frame cards. You'll deal them all face down. Um, you'll notice that there are 22 cards here because we're using 0 through 10. Um, this is even an, uh, an activity, not even an activity, but it's, it's an ability to recognize numeracy as well. These cards are arranged in an array. Students have been practicing counting by fives, so they could even figure out how many cards are here before you play the game as they're laying them out. 5, 10, 15, 20, 21, 22. You can have this, your child count these out as they're laying them down and arranging them and however you'd like to play the game. So the goal of dot 10 memory is to take two cards, find them, and they need to, the sum of those two cards needs to be 10. So we have a card here that's six. So we want the other card that we turn over to be a four. Oops, well, I did not plan that. That actually happened to work out that way. So I would take that card. Um, so the next person would go, oh, or, if you're playing by yourself, you can just try to work this until you get 10. Ah, this is a blank card, so that is zero. And, oh, let's see, two. So no, those don't work. So it doesn't matter if it's one of the dots or if it's the 10 frame card, your goal is to get 10. So this is a fun game to play. Um, you could, the, the great part of this is, um, there are so many games that they've included here. 
Um, some of them are more challenging. Some of them are a little easier. You could play this with students as young as three. So some of your younger um, children at home can play this. And I think you'd have a fun time as adults playing these. They have a version of 21, so it's similar to a blackjack game. Um, they're trying to uh, get a total of sum of 21 without going over. The next game I'm going to share with you, let me clean up my deck of cards here. The next one is a puzzle game. And this one you can play with five cards or you could start with three if it's a little bit too challenging. Um, and up to moving up through 10. So this game is called Polka Loop Puzzle. So the goal of this game is to arrange the cards so that when they come out, so your final result is that they come out in order of one, two, three, four, five. However, you have to turn the cards down a certain way. So the first card that you're going to turn over, you're going to turn face up. One, and then you're gonna take the next card and put it under. And then you wanna get two under. You're gonna flip this one. Three, take this card, put it under. Four and five. Now, I can't tell you how I did that. You have to figure that out. That's the puzzle. Um, so this is a fun game for the kids to really challenge themselves logically in thinking about how they might arrange these cards in the correct order. So um, I highly recommend taking a look at their website. As I mentioned in um, the notes that I have um, on our Google Classroom, take a look at the games, um, take a look at the TED Talk that he has there. It's really fascinating. Um, what he says about math and the last part that he talks about number five on his video is the importance of play that math is really a lot about playing and asking questions we're so used to math being um, all about getting the right answer but it's more than that it's logic and it's perseverance and it's asking questions so here are a couple of things for you to um, play with your student take a look at that website and play and have fun.